I'm talking about this. See, money doesn't just buy you a better life, better food, better cars, better education. It also makes you a better person. Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. And this video is about how I got $200,000 from the government in order to pay for my schooling, for my post back, for my PA school, for my housing, and for my living expenses during post back and PA school. And I was able to graduate as a physician assistant completely debt free. That sounds good to you. Stay tuned. Watch the rest of the video. Okay. So how did I get the GI Bill, the U.S. government, to pay for $200,000 worth of education, so worth of tuition, fees, living expenses, all of that. How did I make that happen using the post-9-11 GI Bill? I'm going to share my screen and show you exactly how I did it. Okay, so I actually kind of prefabricated this, uh, this spreadsheet already, but I'm going to put these numbers in new so that you can see exactly how I got to that number of $200,000 provided by the GI Bill for my uh, post back and for my PA school education. So I ended up graduating as a physician assistant completely debt free. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do because the first thing that I did was uh, my post back at Cornell University. So because this was in 2017 at this point, that's like five, six years ago, uh, using Cornell's current tuition, which I think is like 70 or even $80,000, I'm not sure. Uh, would not be accurate. So I actually found this um, from, you know, news.cornell.edu. So it's definitely a reputable source. And in 2017, the tuition was, as you can see, $52,600. That's just tuition. That's not books. That's not fees. That's not living expenses, housing, gas, none of that. It's straight up just tuition. So let's populate that. So tuition, post back, it was just those two semesters. It was about $52,000 for that year, for those two semesters, okay? So that's what this is. Next, I'm going to do, I'm just gonna do uh, tuition first, right? So if you go to any PA program's website, you should be able to find the cost to attend the whole program. So the problem with this is a lot of the cost is estimated. So here you can see the grand total for attending uh, Lemoyne, where I went, physician assistant program is about 162, no, $167,000 for the two years. It's a 24 month program. The reason this is not necessarily accurate is it includes all kinds of other fees that are estimates and also things that may or may not be paid by you. So for instance, the pants uh, is about 500 bucks. It's uh, the exam that you have to take after graduating from PA school in order to get your license, assuming you pass. Uh, so uh, the GI Bill actually paid for that for me, which was awesome. But people who don't have the GI Bill, you know, you'd be paying for that state licensing fees, depending on the state, and also the people that you work for, your employer, if you get a job right out of school, they might pay this for you, uh, your DEA license in order to prescribe medications. Again, your employer might pay that for you. Mine certainly did. Um, AAPA membership fees, NYSSPA, that's the New York State uh, PA Association, all things that you should be a member of if you work in New York State. But again, your employer might be paying those things. So either way, the point here is, this $167,000 is not necessarily accurate. So I am only going to go based on these two things. Tuition, fall, spring, and summer, the whole year. And uh, here, fall, spring, and summer for year one and for year two. So as you can see here, about $46,000 per year, $47,000 per year uh, for the tuition. So I'm going only off of that. So for PA school, tuition year one, it said $46,000. Tuition year two, $47,000. Now, other stuff here you could see in the breakdown, books, equipment, room and board, uh, you know, utilities, personal transportation, a computer, you know, $1,500 is definitely not what my computer costs that I went through PA school with. It was much cheaper than that. Uh, parking, health insurance, you know, all this stuff that may or may not apply to you. So what I'm going to do as far as living expenses is much simpler than this. And I'll show you exactly how. All right. So our spreadsheet so far just has tuition. Books and supplies. Uh, the GI Bill gave, I want to say, about a thousand bucks for the year. So a thousand bucks for uh, post back and two thousand dollars for PA school because one year here and two years there. Uh, so it was about a thousand dollars a year that the GI Bill gave you for books and supplies. Now, as far as all the miscellaneous ancillary expenses, uh, 
Those are hard to calculate because they're so different. But what I'm going to do is calculate just based on the housing allowance. So you may or may not know the post 9-11 GI Bill pays for your tuition in full, and it also gives you a housing allowance. So the way you calculate that is you go right here to the Defense Travel website, and you uh, you calculate the housing allowance that you get per month depending on the area that you live in. So for instance, I'm going to do PA school first. And I went to PA school in 2019 and 2020 and 2021, I guess. And I know that the zip code around Syracuse is this. And when you use the post 9-11 GI Bill, you actually get E5, basic housing allowance, with dependents. So if you see that and you allow pop-ups, you see right here. All right, so for Syracuse for 2019, uh, what I actually received was $1,515 per month. For um, So let's just say it's about the same for both years. I think it goes up every year a little bit, but not all that much. So my housing allowance for the 24 months of the program was equals 24 times about you know $1,500 a month, give or take, right? So about $36,000 during my PA school time, uh, the GI Bill paid me that for the housing allowance, which of course I used for housing, but also for food, for transportation, for everything else. I basically lived off of that $1,500 per month, plus my savings that I had from the military. Now, because, oops, uh, I actually need to look up the zip code for Ithaca because my post back was at Cornell University that was in Ithaca, New York, which has a totally different cost of living. And because of that, it has a totally different basic allowance for housing. So I'm gonna say Ithaca, New York, zip code. And you could do this with anywhere in the world that you have school, right? So if you happen to have school in like Los Angeles, New York City, your basic allowance for housing is gonna be much, much higher than what I got in, uh, in uh, Syracuse. So 14853, let's go with that, right? So 14853. And this was actually in 2017 that I went to post back. So it might be a little lower. And you'll see right here, 1,692 is about what I got per month for housing allowance in Ithaca. So this is going to be equals, and it was only nine months because it was just two semesters. So nine months, I think it might've even been less than that because Christmas break didn't count. So I wanna say like eight months, right? Eight months times about 1,700 bucks per month is what I received. So. Based on these calculations, you see that my post back tuition was about $52,000. My PA school tuition total was a little over $90,000. Books and supplies were about $1,000 a year. And then uh, my housing allowance total during my two semesters of post back was about $13,000. And then my uh, housing allowance total during the two years of PA school was $36,000. Of course, I supplemented that a little bit with my savings that I saved up during the military. Uh, because it's kind of difficult to live on this housing allowance. But that's not to say that it's not a tremendously generous benefit. And I super appreciated the VA paying for me to go to school and also to live and uh, have housing. So the way we're going to calculate this is equals sum parentheses, all of this good stuff right here. And that gives us a grand total of $197,600. Let's bold that for emphasis. Look at that almost $200,000 that the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA, the post 9-11 GI Bill, in addition to the Yellow Ribbon Program, uh, paid in order for me to go to school, to go to post back, to get my GPA up in order to get into PA school, and then finally to get through PA school completely debt free. So let me actually stop sharing my screen now that we have this, uh, this figure of about $200,000 a year that I ended up getting from the GI Bill. Okay, now you can see my face. All right, so just a couple more things here, because if you uh, are a veteran, you might be thinking, wow, that is absolutely amazing. I want the GI Bill to pay $200,000 for my schooling in order for me to graduate debt-free with a great career that pays good money um, and not have to pay back student loans, right? So first off, I'm going to talk to the veterans, the vets out there who want to use their GI Bill. Very, very good benefit, definitely tremendous. But one thing I want you to think about and one thing that is not talked about frequently enough is this. If you are using your GI Bill and you do not graduate, or even if you fail a class, you have to pay that money back. Okay, that's something that a lot of people don't think about when they're signing up for classes, right? You sign up for a class, you think I'm going to pass this class, you don't think I'm going to fail this class. But it's something that you need to keep in consideration that if you fail a class, the GI Bill is not going to pay for that. They're going to make you pay them back. 
if you fail out of the whole program, for instance, if I had failed out of the PA program, I would have had to pay all of that money back. If I would have failed classes in my post back, I would have had to pay all of that money back. So worst case scenario, let's say I get into PA school. I'm stoked. I want to be a PA. It's awesome. I've been working for 10 years of my life to finally get here. And then I fail out of the program. Well, not only am I now not a PA, I also have to pay the government all that money back that they paid for me to try to go to PA school. And not only that, but I'm not a PA, so I'm not making any money. How am I supposed to pay $200,000 back to the government? And if you know anything about the government, they're very slow to give you money and they're very, very fast to garnish your wages or any possible way you have of making money and take that back. So the government takes money much faster than it doles money out. Trust me, you know, being in the military, being a veteran, uh, relying on the VA at some point in my life, I know that for a fact. The government does not like to give out money and they do very efficiently take money from you. So careful. So basically just kind of a, a message of warning, I guess. If you are a veteran, you're going to use your GI Bill. Understand that if for whatever reason, any reason whatsoever, you fail out of whatever program you're doing, you're paying all that money back. Okay. So that's one. Now, talking to the civilians out there that are not veterans or maybe not veterans yet, uh, one to say, don't be jealous of veterans with their GI Bill because if they happen to you know, fail out of the program, they're paying all that money back. So it's not exactly you know, carte blanche to do whatever you want with education. You got to pass. You got to do well. So that's one. Two, don't be jealous of veterans because, yes, it is a tremendously generous benefit. And I know all veterans really appreciate the post 9-11 GI Bill so that we can go to school for free and graduate debt free. But it's not exactly free, man. I mean, we gave up years of our lives to get this benefit and some veterans were much less lucky than I was and they gave up a whole, whole lot more than just a few years of their life. Some people gave up limbs, arms, legs, hands, feet. Some people gave up you know, their mental health, PTSD, anxiety. Some people gave up, you know, other health areas. I think every veteran has something wrong with their health due to their service, you know? So yeah, the GI Bill is tremendous, but it's not free. We paid for it in years at the very best and at worst with, you know, our lives or somebody's life or our injuries or our health, be it physical or mental or both. Okay. So that's just a message to anybody who might think like, oh, why do veterans get this benefit? I think as a veteran and also now as a taxpayer, it's the least we can do. It's the least we can do for people who put their life on the line for their country, for our freedoms. The GI Bill, letting people get ahead in life, get um, educated is the least we can do for our veterans, okay? So yeah, that's one thing. Also to the civilians watching this who might think like, man, I do not wanna pay you know, thousands and thousands of dollars and graduate with 100, 200, 300, $500,000 in debt, man. This GI Bill thing sounds amazing. And the GI Bill is not the only way to get the government to pay for your schooling if you give them some time. You know, the VA has options. Uh, ROTC has options. The GI Bill, of course, if you enlist or even if you go in as an officer and then you get out of the military, this is what I used. That's always an option. So if you happen to be a civilian and this sounds good to you, you know, while you're in school, only focusing on academics, not being financially tremendously stressed, but only having to focus on academics. And if you pass, you graduate debt free, you know? So if that sounds good to you, the military, uh, GI bill, other things in the military that can pay for schooling are tremendously good options. And I actually have a whole video I made about that. I'm going to link right here. And sorry, my friends here, uh, going to make me some dinner. So sorry that ding just, uh, distracted me, but anyway, and also just a little rant about tuition prices, like, man, they're going up like crazy. Like, the cost of school now is absolutely freaking ludicrous. And if I was advising any young person, I would say definitely get on this path, man. Try to get the government, try to get some way to somebody, to have somebody pay for school, whether it's an academic or an athletic scholarship. If those things are not an option for you, like they are not for most people, the military option, the GI Bill, anything like that is a great, great option. And if anyone has questions about that, post that below and I will be happy to answer those. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video, how I got $200,000 from the government to pay for my post back and also my PA school and graduated debt free.